what is going on, everybody? Uh, I'm just going to let some people start crawling their way in. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are uh, in the geography of the globe that we call Earth. I hope that's not too uh, too controversial what I just said, calling the globe Earth. Um, welcome. Uh, we are on, I believe it is Wednesday, so that would make it day three. I already Did I do a show today? I don't even know. Day three of Sideshow's Art Print Expo, which is our five-day event celebrating the Sideshow's Art Print uh, program, the fine arts program, which um, we've been celebrating all this week. We still going all the way to Friday and we've been doing artist interviews and giveaways and everything. And I see people starting to crawl into the chats. I see you. I see you. Um, and today we're going to do something fun. We're doing another artist interview. But before I get to that, I just want to do some do some do a little housekeeping. So um, first of all, uh, hold on. We're going to talk about the short link to see the blog. Wait, it's going to show up here, side.show forward slash Expo 22. This is going to tell you uh, what is going on, where it's going on, and how it's going on. Um, I know there was one little mistake uh, at 1 p.m. that started. Uh, it's still going on, I believe, now uh, on uh, sideshow.live. Uh, we have a giveaway challenge going on right now, so make sure you jump to one of our social media channels that will give you the information on how to enter my hands. What am I doing with my hands? I'm like a magician. Um, and also, uh, let's bring that other short link up to join the Hall of Frame group at side.show forward slash Hall of Frame. This is our new group that is celebrating all things art prints. And for anyone who doesn't know, uh, we are Sideshow. We are a pop culture and collectibles company, and that includes art prints. Um, and we are going live in Facebook on the Facebook group, obviously Hall of Frame, the Sideshow, uh, Let Your Geek Sideshow group, YouTube, and Twitch. So make sure you're doing the whole like, comment, subscribe, hitting the notification bell, because you don't know what's going to happen or when, and you want to be in the know. So without further ado, as I just went blah, 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 I would like to introduce our artist interview for today, um, responsible for this uh, excellent background I have behind me and does a lot of work with uh, Thomas Kincaid Studios. So uh, Thomas Kincaid, so uh, he, I'm introducing Scott Smith, Scott, come back out. That was a really cl I did a hey, clumsy intro. Doing, <laughs> that was pretty cool. How are you today? Doing great. Thank you for the invitation of being able to speak to you today. I think oh, it's great. I'm excited because I mean you're you're doing a lot. So I want to bring up. Uh, we also I'm going to do my magic thumbs here. Not thumbs. What is it called? Snapping. I know <laughs> words. Um, we have Thomas Kincaid. Let's go. Where is it? Kincaid Expo. If you go to side.show forward slash Kincaid Expo, you're going to see everything that we carry, uh, that we currently carry. Uh, current carry. I'm doing real well with this. Uh, <laughs> carry <you>. on. <laughs> from, from Thomas Kincaid, um, which uh, you did this beautiful print that I want to bring up fully on screen in a second. Let's see. Whoosh, let's see. Whoosh. Mike is. There you go. Mike is awesome, by the way. Mike, super producer Mike backstage. He's not used to my my hand movements. Uh, this is the this is the Gotham City, right? This is wait. Correct. The yeah. name? Goth yep. correctly. This is the Gotham City. It's the Batman Gotham City. You can mm -hmm. go, you can order it, pre-order it now at side.show forward slash Gotham Expo. So we're gonna get to talking to this print in a second because this is really cool and there's a lot going on here. But first, I just want to ask the easy question, which okay. is how did you get started in art and how did you develop your style? Because that's something we always want to know from an artist, because okay. it could be based on where you're from, who, who who influenced you, what you've read. So what is your thing? What What is your start and the influence on your style? OK, um, it, it actually goes back to when I was in seventh grade. And, you know, I always drew a lot as a, as a kid, you know, so I was always drawing and whatever where I could find a piece of paper, I drew on it. Um, and at seventh grade. I was playing sports. I loved school, but I was getting C's, D's, and F's. You know, I, I loved school in a fun way, <laughs> not in a smart way. You got so, an A in recess, right? Exactly. So my sister, who was like 10 years older and she was in college, pulled me aside and she said, you know, what are you going to do with your life? And I mean, that was the question that changed my whole life. You know, it was, um, you know, so I looked at her, my jaw dropped. And I'm like, oh, uh, I don't know. So... So then um, she said, well, you draw all the time and, uh, you know, you love art. So why not think about being an artist? And I'm like, geez, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking Monet or Van Gogh. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to be an artist. But she's like, you know, why don't we go to the library and we'll look and see what kind of jobs are out there for artists. 
So we did that and looked at commercial art, illustration, design, package design. And I'm like, wow, this could be really fun. So she said, you know, if you're going to do this, you need to get good grades to go to college. Otherwise, they won't accept you. So I'm like, okay, not a problem. So I tur- next day, I turned around. I started getting A's and B's. <laughs> oh, all right. so, so, so art not only just – not only did, did you get interested in art, but the art then inspired you to do better – Right. I had to do well with everything. It's so important because I didn't have a goal before. You know, I'd never make it as a professional athlete. So I was just having a lot of fun. But, um, you know, it's one of those things where I thank God my sister, you know, did that. Otherwise, because my parents didn't go to college. So it's one of those things where they would have just let me go out there and I would have been a cab driver. No offense to cab drivers. But um, respect, especially as a New Yorker, as if anyone doesn't know out there, because I don't talk about it. Respect for the cab driver. I took my life with them. (laughs) <laughs> but um but no it was, it was a great thing and then from there you know i went to college and everything and i just kept filling my mind with art yeah so it was great that's what i do and that's the thing with when when an artist when when art gets that art that, that spark in an artist and then it just it just adds to the world because I, i'm the type of person who art is everything whether it's three-dimensional two-dimensional whatever yep. uh you know whatever medium it is it is everything because yep. it's just how we make sense of the world around us and apply it to ourselves, you know? Um, so I appreciate that that spark lit in your brain, gave, giving us this awesome print, by the way, that we're going to get to. Um, <laughs> we're going to get there. I have I have a row. I have a plan. I have, I have, I have a path. I, I, I got it on my maps. Um, I want to talk about uh, Thomas Kincaid and his legacy. So um, some of our viewers may not be familiar. If you're not, I mean, this is, this is a good place to learn it. Um, and he was his legacy. He was known as the painter of light. So can exactly. you can you explain? Um, because you know you're you're working in that studio, you're working in that world. Uh, what is the Kincaid style and that painter of light where he got that you know nickname? Yeah, I think um, from from what I know too, going back, I think Thomas Kincaid was you know he went to some great art schools and you know plus he was self taught on top of it. But you know he started out I think with Ralph Baschke doing fire and ice backgrounds with James Gurney, which James Gurney yeah. did in Utopia. They're good yeah. friends, I believe, or they were good friends. And um, by the way, uh, to interrupt you, we, I, me and Rob, who you met earlier, got to go to the Frazetta Museum and see all of his stuff ooh. with that as well. So It's a beautiful museum I've been there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway, sorry, I interrupted you. Ralph Bakshi, oh, no Fire and Ice. <laughs> so then um, um, I think, you know, in, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, you probably learned the beautiful composition work and the color and you know, and the design to really hold, you know, animation in front of a beautiful background. And after he left that movie, then I think he, well, I know he went on to become a painter and in his paintings, he just, he just really pushed to, you know, make sure they're the best that they could be. But then on top of it, he had all these levels of what I call levels of discovery. Right. So, I mean, there's faith built into him. There's family built into him. There's, you know, it's peaceful and, and you want to be in these images. And he was so great at um, utilizing color, light and shadow um, to really hold your attention into a painting. Because I learned in graphic design or advertising, I should say, that you want to keep the person's eyes on an image as long as you can. Right. So that then they'll buy it. Right. And he was a master at this. I mean, you look at his paintings and your eyes don't leave the image. They just go all over the place. And, that, and that's something we're going to talk about later, too, is that like... Mm-hmm. It and doesn't stop. Too. Yep, is yeah. doing that. We just try to capture Thomas Kincaid's love for what he did and keep that legacy alive. You know, right. and it's tricky. It's tough, but I, you know, I love doing it. Yeah. And and how did you get started uh, working with with the studios? Um, interesting story. Um, I was doing product development, and which is you know I, I can show you. I grabbed one thing and brought it out. Really quick. Ooh. All right, that's it. Interview's over. He left. No, just kidding. <laughs> oh wow. But I worked at a company and I developed, oops, I developed product. And okay. so what we did is we would utilize Thomas Kincaid art on the product. And that way, oh. here's another one. I don't know if you can oh, see this. Oh, wow. It's big. It's a sled. But it yeah. holds like all these plates. And it's all Thomas Kincaid art. And so I, I, I worked in a company where I did like, 20 years of doing product. I probably designed thousands of products, wow. um, created them. But a lot of it was Thomas Kincaid was one of the biggest licenses for this company. And, um, you know, so I really got to know his art by trying to fit it into product. 
Right. And so, you know, you, you can't just take an image and slap it on a product. It had a fit. So sometimes I would have to paint more to the image to make it fit. And I really learned his art, his style, his look by doing that over all the years. And right. so I looked at the company and then I got a call from Art Brand Studios, Kristen, right. and great boss. Oh my God. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and she, you know, she's, Scott, are you looking for work? Cause she heard through the, you know, she saw my resume at another company that they own. And so, um, I said, yeah, I'm looking for work. And she's like, geez, we'll take you right away. So I jumped right on board, did a couple of paintings just to show them I could do it. And, and it's been great. It's, it's a, you know, it's a dream job. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Cause imagine, imagine that like you work with something and you're inspired by something. And that's, that's something that I've learned is that, you know, and, and this way you can put your passion into it. You know, like even me with sideshow, just like you with Tommy's kid, you learn it, you love it. And then yeah. you get to be a part of it. Yeah. And that's an excellent story. Now, did you ever get to meet uh, and work with Thomas? Uh, yes, I did. Um, when I was de developing a product and designing a product, uh, he would come out to the company right. and work with creative directors and some of the senior product development people. And we would have these brainstorms and he would come in and sit down with us or maybe be 20 of us at a table and we'd start spewing these ideas off. And all of a sudden he's like seven steps ahead of us. You know, right. he's like, okay, now take this and do that and do this and do that. And why don't you try this image with this? And he starts going off and I'm like, Oh my God, the guy's a genius. And, uh, you know, it's easy to just step in and start coming up with all these great ideas, you know? And, and cause we'd already done a lot of great ideas. At the company right. He's like, for. he's pulling all the pieces from around yeah. the table and putting it in his head yeah. and then arrange. He's basically the puzzle pieces. He's taking all the puzzle pieces and making the final, the final call. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. That's really yeah, cool. He's, that, he's, he's really good. I would love to be in the room where it happened, as as uh, as they say yeah, in that musical. You, you tell you, he's a really great guy, and you know, and you knew that there was genius in him, type of thing, right. just for you know how he talked and how you know look at his paintings and um, look at what he's done. I mean, he's uh, out of all art history, he's the top um, publisher. I mean, he's sold the most images, type of thing. Right. And, yeah. And he is, uh, you know, that name is basically legendary, right? You know, it's a, it's a legendary uh, in art, in uh, pop art, in, you know, in all sorts yeah. of different art circles. Like his name is legendary. He's one of the ones that, that people always uh, will remember. Mm -hmm. So um, this is something I want to talk about, the style, because this is, you know, this is the, you know, the Kincaid style here. Um, let's mm -hmm. bring up that print again. And so one of the things in Kincaid's art, oh, let's let's get my mind here. In his yeah. art is um, it, there's a lot of hidden details and a lot of sometimes Easter eggs. And this Batman Gotham City print, which you can uh, pre-order. Uh, let's see the. Uh, uh, I didn't. Oh, I didn't snap my fingers at side.show forward <laughs> slash Gotham Expo. Um, now there's a lot happening in this, and I got the opportunity. And I don't want to let. I don't want to give too much away here, but um, this was done. This is a Batman Gotham City in collaboration. You worked the studio and you worked directly with DC to get this out. Um, and it's mm -hmm. full of hidden surprises. So what was, you know, what in, went into, before we get into the Easter egg conversation, what went okay. into developing and like painting this piece? Like, where did you get your inspirations? Like favorite parts of it to render? Like wh where did you pull everything from? And, and the whole process and getting this, give us the whole story, the whole 20 week okay. story. Um, well, it's really Batman. interesting too, because, you know, you look at Batman and how dark and, decrepit you know, you know cd that the, the scenes are in the city and stuff of gotham city and you know and it's like these areas where your eyes just kind of try to look into the shadows to see what's going on you right. really can't see it and thomas kincaid being the painter of light uh, i don't think we wanted to go down that route right so you know it's like okay so what would work with thomas kincaid so between dc and art brand studios and myself on um, collaborating on the image um you know started looking at gotham city the map you know, and it's like, okay, in, what is it, downtown, there's the Diamond District. And so, you know, thinking about the Diamond District and all the wealth that's in that area in Gotham City, okay, it would probably be a little better lit. It's a little, you know, it's a little nicer area. Right. Um, so we thought that'd be the perfect area for this Batman image. And, um, you know, and where would all the criminals want to be? <laughs> in the Diamond there? District. <laughs> exactly. So um, that's kind of like where we stepped off from. And it was a matter of, you know, trying to come up with the look, you know, the, the, the buildings with the styling and the, the Gothic look and, um, you know, the darkness in the background showing the, the bat signal and, and right. the, the city. So, and so, so, and that's really cool that, that, that you put all these little touches on it because like, 
like you said, everything up in the front of the picture is light and in the background is a little dark. And, and mm -hmm. just, there are a lot of Easter eggs in this. And again, I got to see a high resolution, like the big version of it. So I got to actually look in and start, it was almost like a, like a, I don't, I don't want to say where's Waldo. I don't want to diminish it like that, but it, no, but it's a, it's a, can you constantly find something right. new in it? And, and you do the more you look at it, which I love in a piece of art. Now, is there any like, Give us one Easter egg that someone may not be looking for as they're previewing this. They're going to go over it. They're mm -hmm. going to look at it out when they're going to go pre-order it. But give us one Easter egg that they may that you don't think they may be looking for. Yeah, so one that you wouldn't be looking for and you may not know, it's on the building on the left above, you know, Two-Face and Bang. And yeah, it's yeah. The, little, the little symbol that's on the wall there, that little light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's from the original logo of Light Post Studios, which was Thomas Kincaid Studios. And um, utilizing that piece there just worked perfect because it looks like just kind of like a little you piece know, of the building. Or something. But it represents yes. Thomas Kincaid. That's so cool. So, so it's, it's like not only you have a lot of Batman Easter eggs in this, you actually have Thomas Kincaid to do his, uh, Easter eggs. In. That's actually that's a great touch. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't want to give away any more because there are so many. I kept picking out and I, was, and I just I, I would zoom in on a little part. And like, oh, wait, there's something in there. And like. You did a great job of hiding so much in oh, okay. this painting. So. That's the fun part of paintings. It's almost like you're, you're playing a chess game. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like you're moving from one, one area to the next. And at the same time, you, you know, it's the lighting, it's the composition, it's the Easter eggs, it's, you know, all the detail. And, and Thomas Kincaid was phenomenal for how he painted. When you look at one of his paintings, you, you'll see like just a flower petal, all right. the different colors he used and the leaves, right. all the different colors. So it's a matter of like, really bringing all this to life and, I, and even right here it's so funny that i had this as my background uh because mm -hmm. it's even a little bigger the the way that the the police lights play off of the the background you that's that's killer i mean again using light you know painter of light mm -hmm. and then the light is so much of an aspect of it with the lanterns with again the symbols everything over here and it's just mm -hmm. such a beautiful job did a great job <laughs> thanks appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> so so I'm, I, you know, a lot, there's a lot of bat fans out there. There's a lot of bat fans out there and they're going to be very happy with this, but like, what do you like most about Batman as a character? And like, you know, you use this depiction in the print, um, which, um, I love the, the bat symbol on here is not like the old one or like the, 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 you know, the Adam West sixties one. This is this very specific, uh, bat, bat symbol print you got here. I love that I'm doing this and now I'm out of focus. Um, <laughs> woo. uh, but the, um, now I'm back in focus. But what what what, what did you bring into this? What is your favorite aspects of Batman? Um, well, it, it, it's interesting because I grew up with the 1966 Burt Ward, and, yeah. Adam West and Burt Ward um, Batman, and it was like um, you know I just loved it. I clipped out pictures from magazines and put them in scrap scrapbooks, and, yeah. um, and and the show was great because you could sit there and, and like just I mean it went so fast, it was so good, and you'd wait for the next episode. So then all of a sudden now Batman has grown and grown and grown and he's this dark, awesome character. Yeah. And I love it. You know, it's, um, I still hold near, dear in my heart is the 1966 version, but with this image, you know, we had the license from DC for the comic book. We don't have it for the movies. Right. So we worked with DC and to really get the look of the characters that were so important to them. Right. Um, and I think it worked out great. The characters look great. Um, you know, they all work together and uh, it's and, pretty cohesive that way. And there's so many, and it's not just Batman in the print, right? It's not just Batman. There's so many of his rogues gallery and oh. not all of them are in the front, right? So like you said, like right. you mentioned Bane, Yep. Well, like Two Face, you may not notice until you're actually looking closely, right? And again, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying not to give away too much here, like so. So don't look at what I just showed you. But <laughs> there's stuff happening in literally every building. You could find someone or something, you know. Yep. And, and again, going back to the Easter eggs that a lot of these Thomas Kincaid prints and you know the work that you're doing like has and. You know, that's always a, a very enjoyable thing because then again, you're getting so much life out of art. Like, so, you know, it's like reading a book that you love and then you read it again and you take more out of it. It's the same thing with something you could stare on the wall, you know, that's sitting on your wall or, or wherever you have it. I mean, I mean, I guess it would be on the wall nowhere, nowhere else. But, <laughs> and you mm -hmm. can just keep staring at it and getting more out of the story. It's a so great this, conversation piece, too. Your friends come in and you're, I mean, you're able to point things out to them and um, there's so much to talk about. And, 
And, and like even when you're talking about the characters, when you look in the sewer hole in front of the car, basically where Killer Croc is coming from, I'm hiding it. I'm hiding it. <laughs> yeah, but I see. Wait, but, but there's the Batmobile there. The other side. Yeah, he's like kind of down right the bottom. Yep. yep. So there's steam coming out from under the manhole cover, and he's lifting the manhole cover, and, and it's like, what a great place for Killer Croc to live. Right. <laughs> York, or Gotham City sewers. <laughs> yeah, he's so grumpy. I mean, and if Gotham City sewers are anything like New York City sewers, man, I know why Killer Croc is such a grumpy boy. Yeah, lives he's, off the roof. <laughs> he's so angry, especially, when, it's so, so hot down there. Look at all the, like when you drive down the street in New York, and you see all that steam coming out, and I mean, mm. you're, you're, you're yeah. also, you know, way, you're further north than me, so you have that same situation too up in chicago right the steam coming out of everyone who's in the, even yeah. in the winter you're hot it's Oof. weird it's, like, it's not so like it's compared to new york you don't see it as much like new york right. you just see the steam coming out so i don't know what's the, those are generators or what's down there but you know in new york, chicago you don't see it as much it's killer croc his, his, it's his kitchen yeah. that's what he yeah. he's not angry he's not getting dirty yeah. he's opening he's opening the sewer just to vent some of the kitchen heat out <laughs> <laughs> he cooked something it's burning he's baking something it's burning <laughs> we're, we're really going off the rails here wait hold on i think that's dc calling wait no uh -oh. <laughs> they're yelling at me um so here's the thing um so a lot of artists and we we find this a lot when we talk to artists they're their own biggest critics but you know what with you i don't want a criticism i want to say what do you think is your strongest artistic quality strongest um I, I think it's my versatility. Um, yeah. You know, when I went to art school, you know, it was like a lot of teachers are like, you have to find a style. You have to lock into a style. No one's going to look at your portfolio if you don't have it. And I started down that route, but then I actually kind of got more from illustration into fine art. Right. And the more I learned about art, the more it was like, oh, my God, if I know a lot of styles, I'll get a lot of jobs. Right. And it worked out great because I freelanced. Well, actually, out of school, I had an art gallery. And a partner and I, we sold our own watercolors and we did custom framing and taught classes. But after that, I got into more of the product end of the field. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, monogram models, Ravel models, if you remember that company. Yeah, and, I do. You know, I worked at some great places, um, you know, and then uh, it's one of those things where, it, it just, you know, I just kept learning, kept learning. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, That's the thing. The no, you did. <laughs> you know, but you, no, you, but you said versatility because you know what that, oh, yeah, yeah, that does? It doesn't lock you into one thing that yeah. gives you an opportunity to spread your wings. And mm -hmm. I actually want to say um, that we have Pat Bauden said that uh, in his in, in over on YouTube. Hold on, let me bring this comment up. Said uh, that they used to discuss Kincaid in th art theory class where they were always good discussions. And oh, you know, of course, <laughs> you're going to be discussing Kincaid in art theory because it's not just. You know, you know, he's he developed like we were talking about earlier. He developed this style. But but like I said, mm -hmm. back to you, like being versatile doesn't lock you into one place. It gives you not only an opportunity for creative growth. Right. Oh, yeah. Or, you know, personal, you know, financial and, and, and career good. growth. Because they do everything from like I used to children's books. I designed and developed a clothing and um, all kinds of products and Zippo lighters and yeah. Happy Meal toys. And so I've oh. been over the board and then like with each, you know, as long as you can do each style, great. Boom. They pull you right in. You know, right. it's not like they're looking for, they don't look at portfolios and they say, okay, you've only got one style. We can't use you. Right. But they look at my portfolio and it's like, Oh my God, you do great here. You do great here. We can use you for this, for that. So it really opened up a lot of doors. Good. And those doors needed to be open. Um, and you brought up something that I want to talk about, which was your happy meal toys. So I need to know because growing up, you got a collecting happy meal toys. I mean, the chicken McNuggets were like my ultimate favorite, but you designed happy meal toys. Tell me about the, like, that is a really cool thing yeah, yeah. On, on, on a resume. Yeah, I don't get to hear that often. Jobs are a lot of toy designers want it. Um, and it just worked out great that, you know, a toy, um, a headhunter called me and said there was this opening and they, they were really looking around for people. And so I went in, talked to them and they offered me a job and I said, great, I took it. So I quit my job, go to, you know, the day before I'm going to start their job, they call me up and they're like, uh, we've got a problem. I'm like, what is that? And they're like, well, the owner's wife took my job, which was, I was going to be in charge of Europe. Asia and um, you know different areas besides America with the happy right. meal toys. So I was going to be in charge of all that, and she took it. And I'm like, oh my god! So they're like, well, 
but we still want you. You can work in, a, you know, in the American division under Happy Mill Toys and work right. under a, a really talented individual that led the group. And then, or you can work in the design department doing, you know, the Monopoly game stuff and all, all the right. and the, you know, all the ad stuff. And I'm like, hey, if you're going to pay me the same amount, I will do the Happy Meal toy designs. Yes. And it, was, oh, it was great. I mean, I sat there and just drew all day long. And uh, I loved it. And then my other company then, they called me back. They're like, you know, they kept wanting me to come back to, to my other company. And finally, I agreed. I mean, it was a good job. But like, here's, do you remember this toy? I was going to ask you, what, what are some of the toys you designed? Yeah. So, well, I, I worked, it was during the teeny beanie baby time, you know? It's oh, like, my goodness. So it was crazy. And I started working with that, you know, and it was actually counting the beans that were in each toy. I mean, it would be perfect. And it was an actual, amazing. you were an actual bean counter. Yep. And, and it's like the toys had to like plop and just sit right. And, right. and so I did Power Rangers. I did Barbie and Hot Wheels. I did, you know, a lot of Disney product. Right. Um, so it, it was great, you know, and then you'd send it out to, you know, send us out to Disney sometimes to work with their artists for a movie that was coming out. And we'd have to be designing the toys a year before the movie came out, at least oh to have God. enough time to get all those toys done while the movie came out. So did it was you actually have to movie. watch the movie or did it spoil the movies for you? But, well, it would spoil it because it's like you see part of the movie, like, and then you see pencil line drawings yeah. within the movie and then you see part of the movie. But we had to come back then to tell everybody, here's what the characters are. Here's what they're doing. Here's some great things we could do with the toys, um, you know. So and, and it didn't really change from that year on type of thing. It's like usually they didn't lose any characters, so we were right. okay. Uh, but no, it was That's great, so cool. great job. That is so cool, especially. I was like going to ask you if you had any. Now uh, we we, um, we used to, oh, I'm sorry. Oh um, no, you go go right ahead. We used to get six of each toy. We you know that our team designed. So I'd bring home garbage bags full of toys. And my kids were at that age where, you know, they were perfect for the Happy Meal toys. Oh my and goodness. so I'm like, okay, you're getting one set for all of you to share. You're not getting a set each because we couldn't right. walk in the house if that was the case. Right. It'd be like a <laughs> hundred toys. toys. Oh my goodness gracious. A hundred yeah. toys a day. Garbage bags yeah. full of toys. Well, crazy. just, I'm going to thank you on behalf of me and all the other uh, Happy Meal toy collectors for, for all the designing that you did. I'm sure there's plenty in the chats that uh, also collected a lot, um, especially the, the, the mini beanies, because I mean, I, by the way, I found one of my beanie babies from like 22 years ago that I bought. It's a little Grim Reaper. So, uh, you know, all of, you know, from all of us that collected Happy Meal toys, thank you. But now sideshow is known also for making toys and making oh. statues and making other things so you made toys now are you also a collector we did talk a little bit about collecting you know you know before the show what are some things you collect and and i already know the answer which let's for the audience yeah. to see um yeah i mean i have a lot of red line hot wheels you know yeah. things like that and i a lot of figures and um i've kind of boxed them all up i used to have shelves in my studio full of everything and yeah. um, but i kind of cleaned up a little bit but just to show you, look, 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 look. I'm 1998, so like some of the original sideshow toys. <laughs> and I brought mine out too, yeah. the Universal Monster Sideshow <laughs> line. But these are great. You know, it's like <sighs> when these came out, my friends and I, because I was doing Happy Meal toys, it's like we looked, the detail on these things are phenomenal. And they were like 10 bucks. And we couldn't believe it. Like you get this beautiful, you know, package and there's a lot of crap with it. And the detail in the faces, and I knew back then it's like sideshow is going to be—they're taking over. It's like yeah. the detail they have in their toys. It's like no one's going to touch them. And, and you by guys the way, I got, pop. I got a shout out to J Guy James Clender for sending this to me because awesome. this is this is one of the best toys that I ever got. I mean, yeah, and I, <laughs> when you showed me before, yeah, there we, yeah, there we go. Oh my goodness gracious, that's Creature what I'm talking about. Lagoon. Creature from the Black Lagoon is, is one of my favorite. These are from the New York Toy Fair back in 2000. Yeah. Because when we were doing Happy Meal toys, we'd go to the Toy Fair and we'd open the door and say, oh, we're from McDonald's. And it's like, here, take these toys, take these toys. It was great. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah, here we go as collectors one and all. Well, listen, um, before I let you go, I want to thank you for for joining us here because this oh, is awesome. This, this print is awesome. Let's bring, let's bring the print back up in the middle because I like it in the middle. Hold on, let's duck. <laughs> Boom. We got to duck the other way. Um, and you can go to uh, side.show forward slash 
Gotham Expo to uh, pre-order this. This is such a cool print. Thank you for, for making this and giving people something more fun to hang on their wall and talk about because this is such an awesome piece. And I dare everybody to try to find as many Easter eggs as they can when they hang this up on their wall because they don't stop. And uh, obviously, I want to shout out again to Thomas Kincaid Studios. Ooh, there we go. Doing the snaps. Uh, you know, go to side.show forward slash Kincaid Expo to do that. Um, Scott, thank you so Hi, much you for doing this. Thank you. This was really informative. It gave us a lot of like behind the scenes, not only into you as an artist, but into the whole process, into the print and the studio. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you everybody watching and, and, you know, and really taking their time to sit down and listen to this. So yeah, thank you. They love, listen, we loved getting to know you and everyone in the, they're, everyone's talking about their favorite pieces and, and their favorite uh, uh, Kincaid pieces and growing up with it. And even now they're talking about the Happy Meal toys that they, they're even talking in the comments about the Happy Meal toys. So you've, you've made a lot of people happy and a lot of people reminiscing. So right. thank, thank you, you so much. And I can't wait to do this again. I can't wait to see more from you. You know, be awesome. Wink, yeah. We'll talk to you again. Yep. Wink, 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 <laughs> oh, wink. I wonder if we're going to work to with see more work of yours yeah, soon. There's, there's a lot of great images coming out, and you've yeah. already got some of them. You, you've yeah. got this Spider Man versus the Sinister Six, and oh. the do or do not. There is no try. The Star yeah. Wars image with the ship coming out of the swamp. And, yeah, I know. Um, X Men playing baseball. Oh, the, yeah. People were shouting out the X Men playing baseball in yeah. the chats. That's such it's a good one. Image. You know, it's kind of it, at first it's like X Men playing baseball, but it's like it really worked. You know, it's, right. it's a beautiful image. Yeah. And then uh, I'm currently working on a couple of great images. There's a Deadpool one, and it's and it's a, a winter image. I can't go into detail. Okay. Um, DC Hall of Justice with. Uh, different characters out front. I'm just signing an NDA on my hand right now. So I don't... <laughs> Bruce Wayne, the, the, the manor. Yeah. Oh. That's a, that's a cool image. And then uh, um, just finished an Iron Man one. So you'll see that on, on the, probably see that pretty soon on the Kincaid website. Oh, sweet. But, um, but yeah, this is great because I, I, I'll, I'll do paintings for them with um, sometimes there's scenes where there, there's a church or mountains in the background, cottages. Uh, Star Wars, it's right. it's you know DC images. Uh, I love doing them. Right. Um, you know other images too, but it's like it's just such a mix of art. And every time they they send me work to do, it's kind of like oh, this is gonna be awesome. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's like Christmas all the time. It's almost like unwrapping a present when they send me work to do. Right, because they call you and they're like, hey, by the way, um, you know, do you like uh, Batman or Superman? And you're like, yes. And they're like, yeah, we just need you to draw it. And you're like, yes. <laughs> it's like Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, you know, right. all that. <laughs> you know, getting getting a job that, you know, that they, they call you up to do something that you're a fan of. And again, that's why, again, uh, you know, bringing me into Sacho, you know, we are collaborative. Me and you have like a similar story. It's like being a fan and loving someone, some someone, something. <laughs> and. and Mm -hmm. loving something and then getting to work with it is a, is a, is a real it's a privilege and it, and it makes it a joy it's crazy I, I sit in my studio and i'm working away and also i look up it's like oh my god gotta feed the dogs or you know what i'm <laughs> <laughs> gotta do something yeah they're, they're already at your leg like biting your shoes they're like come on it's food time but you're too busy involved drawing so listen yeah. thank you oh, so welcome. much uh have a great day and again we'll talk to you soon because i know we know things are coming <laughs> Thanks, all right have a good one all right. How cool was that? Um, I'm, I don't want you to see all the Easter eggs. I mean, there's so many, there's so many in here, but you know, thank you, Scott, for doing this interview. Thank you to the people at Thomas Kincaid studios, always putting out wonderful work. Um, just to reiterate, we, if you go to side.show forward slash expo 22, uh, that has our blog and the information for everything going on. Uh, up next at 4 p.m. Pacific time, uh, you're, I'm back here. It's me with uh, Amy Chase with a special Art Print Expo uh, related win, lose, or die, the high stakes choose your own adventure game, uh, which uh, it's going to be very rewarding as we know. So that's here at 4 p.m. Pacific time. So I'll check you guys out then. Um, and then uh, that then that's going to be the last stream of the day. But thank you all again for watching. Make sure you go to join the uh, Hall of Frame. Oh, there you go. Hall of Frame. I, I don't know what I was pointing up there. It's a Facebook group where we're going to discuss. And if you own any Thomas Kincaid piece, any Scott, Scott Smith pieces, um, any of that, go share it in the group. Go join the group and share it because we love to see it. We love to see your art that you have that we can appreciate together. And that's what that group is about. So please go and join it. So uh, I will see you all at 4 p.m. Pacific for Win, Lose, or Die. And that's me signing off. Don't forget to let your geek side show. See you later, everybody.